Hello, so hello everyone. As Daniel said, my name is Tammy Redensic. Um, I'll be co-presenting today with Allison Asbury. And she'll have a chance to introduce herself in just a moment. Um, but I'm a senior peer-to-peer -peer consultant here at BlackBot. I've been really dedicated to the peer-to-peer -peer space with Black for a little over 10 years and worked with a, a lot of Sierra and Team Razor clients. And a shout out to Sherry Ann. I see you on the line. Um, and welcome. I know we just recently worked together. So but glad to have every one of you here. Um, some things I do. So you know, work for BlackBot. I'm very um, devoted to the nonprofit space. Um, in particular, the Equine Rescue League, where I am a board member. Uh, just recently relocated to Charleston, South Carolina. I'm a North Carolina native, uh, but we just made the journey down here just a couple weeks ago, so I'm still kind of trying to get my bearings in my new place. Um, I'm an extreme couponer. I have three children and, of course, kind of always looking for ways to save money um, and just love anything outdoors and, of course, anything with a family. Now, I'll go ahead and advance for you since you just have the next slide. You can chat in with your introduction. Okay, Tammy you said, my name is Allison Asbury. Actually, it's Allison Summers. I just recently got here this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm a web developer for the Go Team. Um, if you guys are familiar with the Go Team, it's a, a consultant a team here at Black that helps, helps nonprofits get started on Luminate Line. So I build out production assets um, for, for them and uh, Really, my background is in web development, online marketing, with a focus in nonprofits. That's what I'm passionate about. I'm located here in Austin, Texas, um, and um, I'm kind of really interested in volunteering at animal shelters, and I have a passion for fundraising and web design. And, um, aspiring home cook, not that great at it, but trying my hardest. And I'm a zombie and sci-fi nerd, so uh, I'm pretty much really into zombie movies on any Thing, um, sci fi, I can get my hands on. So, Tammy, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Right. Yep. No problem. And when we get to your slide. So, all right, good. Well, let's jump on in. So, of course, today um, we're here to start talking about Giving Tuesday. And I know for some of you, you're in the middle of your peer to peer fundraising and kind of even season. And the thought of even thinking forward to be so first, I know, can be daunting. And then for others of you on the phone, you wrapped up your walks or your other peer-to-peer -peer events, and that season's kind of over, and you're now ready to start focusing on your, your giving. But regardless of where you are in that cycle, uh, Gift Day is, um, is just an initiative that I'm so passionate about. And I really believe that every single nonprofit should be jumping on this bandwagon so you can get your piece of $45.7 million dollars that was raised last year alone. Now, Allison's going to be talking about some truths and giving you guys some data um, from what we have from 2014 and going back the last three years. Um, but that's a lot of money, right, for one day of giving. And I really, again, just believe everybody should be um, putting their best foot forward in order to, to get your deserved for of that. So what I want to focus on today is talking a little bit about what the Giving Tuesday initiative is. We'll look at Giving Tuesday um, report to spot some useful trends, give some examples in the past, and then we had some best practices around launching your Giving Tuesday campaign. Now, Tuesday was founded in 2012 by 92nd Street Y. They partnered with the United Nations Foundation. And they did that at a so it's the season that's so closely associated with giving, and that's that holiday season, right? Follows Black Friday and Sunday. In just three short years, the movement has engaged more than 10,000 organizations worldwide. We'll get into some really good Giving Tuesday campaigns. We start talking about your game plan and, and really kind of how to pair the Giving Tuesday movement um, with some of your past or maybe upcoming peer-to-peer -peer events. I want to take a few minutes and let Ashton review the Giving Tuesday trend report with you. Um, is really hot off the press. So, Elson, I'll pass that ball right on over to you so you can advance your slides. So that link that Tammy was mentioning is right here on this um, this uh, PowerPoint slide here. So if you guys want to go ahead and grab it, you 
you can feel free to grant your leisure and kind of take a deeper dive into look in some of the ends. But for now, I'm going to cover some of the key findings. So let me go ahead and get to the next slide. So um, this data from the key findings is comprised from over 4,000 organizations and represents over $55 million since 2012, which is the first year Giving Tuesday took place. Um, Giving Tuesday donations continues to grow, and they have had double-digit year-over-year growth since 2012. Um, we've seen organizations tend to receive the most donations, but you'll see in a couple seconds when I show you another um, graph that this trend is starting to shift to medium organizations as well. Um, Faith-based organizations have received the largest percentage of online donations during giving, giving today, but this is also starting to um, kind of average out, um, and all organizations are kind of starting to see a, um, a spike in their trends as well. On average, the gift amounts for Giving Tuesday exceed over $100 for most organizations. Um, interesting fact for those of you that have um, mobile responsive donation forms, 17% um, of online donation form views were on a mobile device, so that's something to keep in mind. This graph shows the year-over-year -year percent change in online giving and online transactions since 2012. Now, BlackBot has been able to leverage its deep data assets to take a closer look at Giving Tuesday results over the years. It's that this is only representing on data as that represents the best now of what happened on the day of the event. One of the asked questions in 2012 was whether Giving Tuesday made a difference in online giving compared to the year before. Now, you see from this graph, with a 53% year-over-year increase in giving and a 74% increase in transaction volume in 2012 compared to 2011, we would see a clear indication of a difference made. Now, in 2012, we've continued to see a percent increase in online giving and online transactions year-over-year. And you can see that by our chart right here represented in this graph. This is able to put together data about what types of organizations receive donations on Giving Tuesday since 2012. Now, the breakdown of Giving Tuesday donations by organization size. The sites are grouped by total annual fundraising amounts, which you can see over in the left hand of the screen. You can see that in 2014, there was a significant shift in the amount of online funds raised by medium sized organizations, all the way up to 21%. The data online giving is likely to continue shifting around to organizations of different sizes in years to come. So this is no longer just a um, trend for large organizations, but it's also trending towards medium and possibly even small in the future years. This chart the distribution of Giving Tuesday online donations made by sector. In 12, Giving Tuesday was concentrated among organizations in the med research, human services, and international affairs sectors. In 2013, we saw a shift to faith-based organizations. But overall, most online donations have gone up by sector. And data suggests that organizations who capitalize on Giving Tuesday through online campaigns have an opportunity to raise significant funds. So for those of you, for those of you on the phone, you can kind of see um, which sector you might be in and and kind of see the trends um, projected for that specific sector. And I said about 17% of online donation form views were on a mobile device during Giving Tuesday. And of course, we expect this number to continue to rise. So just keep in mind when you're creating your Giving Tuesday campaigns, how are people coming to your form and also all um, you know, how your form's going to look on a mobile device, as well as, as maybe your email campaign that you'll be running to promote Giving Tuesday. Um, just kind of keep the are you mobile question in the back of your mind. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass this ball right back, back to Tammy so she can continue to develop strategies with, with um, Giving Tuesday. Instead, uh, you can certainly load that entire report. We just kind of sliced and diced it and wanted to share with you all some of the highlights from that. But feel free to, to download that report. There's some really good, um, interesting data. And again, just kind of goes 
to, to prove that we think everybody should be um, getting involved in this initiative. All right. Well, thanks again, Allison. Let's move on more. Let's first um, let's talk about some strategies that in the past uh, for nonprofits. Now, a lot of organizations went to launch an isolated campaign, Job Giving Tuesday. And uh, what I believe really this this approach will raise some funds. There's one campaign for Giving Tuesday. But what I really like to recommend when I'm working with clients one on one is consider weaving this the Tuesday initiative to a bigger yen or a fundraising strategy instead because most of you I'm sure you have some kind of end of year appeal, right? You have a communications character you know you're going to send your stuff out. You know what your communications are going to say. Consider just making this one more kind of piece or one more layer on top of your India appeal altogether. Now, many organizations will launch their fundraising campaign around Thanksgiving. So if that's something that you do and that campaign is going to already be in motion on Thanksgiving, the media exposure that comes with Giving Tuesday Right, comes a few days after Thanksgiving, so your campaign would already be in full swing, um, to approach your campaign and encourage people to get this one strategy that we've seen that works. Now, something else very interesting, and you're going to see this when I show you some examples, um, new sponsors are willing to match gifts on gift day. So your first walk away action today would be trust find a corporate partner. And just a nation match period. And what I really love about that strategy, I mean, of course, matching gifts are great, right? Um, but by doing this, you create a sense of urgency. And we all know in the nonprofit world, that's the key to getting people to move is, is kind of that sense of urgency and that date approach. So if you have a sponsor that will match gifts only on Gift Tuesday, and you into your end of year appeal and you've incorporated it into your communications, people know they're prepared. They know on that date on giving to they need to log in and donate and they can really feel good about that donation being matched. And we've seen that work really, really well. I'm going to show you some examples in a minute. Now it presents a prime opportunity to not only, of course, acquire one time gifts. But to grow your the number of your monthly gifts and your and really your organization's financial baseline, so consider leveraging Giving Day that Giving Day to put monthly programs, and then keep in mind that Giving Tuesday is wildly successful because it appears. So, for example, let's say I follow you on Facebook and I support you. Now, Facebook friends see that I'm supporting you on Giving Tuesday. My Facebook friends are more likely to click and see who you are because they want to know who's the organization that Tammy just donated to or that Tammy's involved with. We talk a lot about this in traditional peer to fundraising, too. And you definitely want to acquire there from my 200 Facebook friends, right? Make sure you're also giving those potential supporters a way to learn about your organization and to showcase your good work. Even if that person doesn't give today, they may be willing to get involved in the future. And of course, we know that as house file building. So this is your, let's say your first attempt at Giving Tuesday or you've even been trying to do this for the past three years. Um, one of the best things you can do is look at successful chains. Probably in your sector, so if you're a co-organization, look at others in, in the care industry, right, so on and so forth. Try to leverage and really mimic what those successful organizations did. So to help you get started, I want to show you a few past successful campaigns and kind of dive into the details of work for each. So let's look at a few examples from Incorporated Giving Tuesday to their year-end fundraising campaign. My favorite is Give to, is give to the World. They set their goal last year at 60000 They also wanted to use 
the day to honor their supporters. So what they did is they jumped on the unselfie movement. And if you haven't heard what that is, you need to Google that right now. Um, it is a very popular trend. I'm going to talk about it as I go through these slides. But simply put, the unselfie is simply you, the not as your supporters to mention to you, you encourage your supporter to take selfie of themselves that shows what they donated and they need to post that unselfie to Facebook or tweet about it. And the brilliance, the beauty behind that is what what is is happening, a couple of different things here. The or the supporter that's posting the unselfie can feel good about themselves, right? They they made a donation, they're supporting you. But really what's the advantage to you? Nixon's hundreds or thousands or whatever Facebook friends and, and Twitter followers see, oh, look what Tate did today. Maybe you should go check that out. And so it's really one more way to spread the word but without you having to do it. And it is a brilliant, brilliant thing. So the unselfie um, really took, took five here. Give kids the world. They encourage their donors to share in selfie photos showing why they supported the organization. And they nearly doubled their goal, ran over $110,000. And what they said worked for but they prepared their supporters through different channels of communication, like social media, email, their website. They created a sense of urgency. They rented their support ahead of time. So into their communication plan, and Tuesday was approaching, and they get ways to get involved, and they shared um, why donations matter. They also enlisted a matching donor so that people knew their donations would be matched up to twenty thousand dollars. And this is what they're giving Tuesday. Let me get to there. What they're giving Tuesday page look like, and I really, really love the way they advertise at the very top that does. We have a matching donor to only it says make your donation count. And I just love the brilliance behind that. And again, having a matching donor, preparing the supporters ahead of time, um, doing the unselfie movement were the three big things. Um, that kids the world um, really credited to success in almost doubling their goal. For Cure Search for Children's Cancer, they hope to increase awareness about children's cancer on social media. That's what they do. And they use Giving Tuesday to kick off their uh, their end of year giving campaign. So they raised a little over $8,000 in Giving Tuesday, and they generated a, a little over $10,000 in the, le the week leading up to Giving Tuesday through um, promotions. Um, but the thing to me was on Facebook, Search was able to gain 306 new likes. But look how many people they engaged, almost 4,000 people with posts, likes, forwards, and things like that. And I think that can be considered a success. So as I mentioned earlier, remember, it's not always about getting that dollar, right? The dollar's nice, but impressions are about building that you can gain actually mean more supporters later. So the exposure to me on your organization is just as equally important. And I see a question. So it's like having an appeal um, with an appeal. And Sherry, and yeah, that is a, that's a, a quick way to put it. Um, so it's like having an appeal with an appeal. It's like having a little Giving Tuesday one day push that is and married with your higher end of your giving campaign. So the end of your giving campaign and appeal and kind of creating a sense of urgency, um, your supporters know they have till December 31st at midnight to push that donate button, right, in order to get the tax receipt and, and all that kind of stuff. And Tuesday is just kind of another little sub-appeal within that big appeal. But again, because it's a one-day dedicated day of giving, people have a sense of urgency to, to go ahead and um, and so that, that's kind of a, a 
I guess the best way to put it. It's a sub-appeal within appeal. Now, we do issues that do giving Tuesday, just as one issue all alone, and then a few slides. So, um, um, work, but really seeing the strategies that work the best is, is yes, having giving Tuesday as like a little appeal within a larger appeal. So I'll carry it. Uh, let's see, they challenge people from across the country um, to help kids keep kids alive under the age of five by giving them the gift of safe water. So this campaign launched before Giving Tuesday with the work around Manhattan, so they kind of built up hype. And then when Water Aid kicked off, um, they had kind of the, that was the largest U.S. matching gift campaign to date and raised over $260,000. Now, some preach a lot about with my peer-to-peer -peer folks the value of showing impact. And our aid did a really good job at this, providing the fact that over 100,000 children have saved because of their efforts. So anything that you can do to see tangible impact of your campaign, whether it's easy or not, can really go a long ways in retaining supporters. So in this case, they're saying $260,000 reached a thousand children. The first stat. What could you say prior to Tuesday, coming up to that launch? Do you have concrete, tangible things you can say, like for every $5 donated, We'll be able to feed a family of four a meal for a day. Um, anything you can do like that really, really goes a long ways. I mentioned earlier, oftentimes giving to is to approach as a way to just create awareness for your organization. It's not necessarily to be viewed as a large revenue generating effort. Let's look at a few giving Tuesday campaigns that did a really good job and what I like to call it, evoking emotion and really encouraging their supporters to pay for it. Third year in a row, for success, they transformed Giving Tuesday into hashtag Giving Shoes Day, which encourages their supporters to do shoes to their dress for success. And this was the first time that the Giving Shoes Day was Shoe Day was implemented on a global level. Um, their goal for 2014 was 2,500 pairs of shoes. And it really is, they focused on bringing shoe donations than donations. And what they did is they really, what they said is they hoped to bring attention to the nation's need for footwear to add to the women that they serve. And what they ended up doing was have, they had approximately over 4,000 new donations on Giving Tuesday last year. And I thought that was a good and interesting campaign. And great. They had Hickory Farms matching every donation up to $50,000. But they were only matched on Giving Tuesday. So getting that sense of urgency, they said, was vital to their campaign. But what I really loved about this one was the time. Hours donated can help your child 100 meals. And as I said earlier, having that evidence, that concrete kind of, I can almost feel it and taste it before I even donate, um, can really, really push donors into to breaking out that credit card. And um, no cap. I think really did a great job with this. So um, it's a little email that they sent out. I mean, the, the paragraph there is not overwhelming. It's not too much to read, right? And they have a nice little tagline. And then in the bold there, you can see the tangible evidence. Every time it's donated can help a child. This is one. <laughs> I just want to throw something funny in here. Um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Southwest Washington, they launched their first ever bailout on Giving Tuesday last year. And what they did is they locked the county sheriff and his twin brother, who's also a sheriff, in a cell at a local mall. And there's three videos on YouTube if you're interested in watching them. 
and there's a community to donate to bail them out. And, um, and, and they did. They said that they were really successful. I don't have the final numbers that they raised, but it's just one more way that they were being creative, calling awareness to who they are and what they do, and that sense of urgency. Not is it giving Tuesday, but our sheriff is in jail. We need to get him out, right? And so that was kind of a fun one. Um, Peace Foundation, they provide free dentistry to communities in need. And what they did is on Giving Tuesday created a Give Up Your Coffee Challenge, which asked people to donate $5 instead of being their daily coffee run. Right? So simple. Please look at some of those examples. Helps you guys to, to see some of the creative ways and things that you could be doing for your Giving Tuesday initiative. So now let's talk a little bit about turning your supporters in fundraisers for your Giving Tuesday campaign. For the have the day, yeah, you'll look the place to target your past team captains and past participants. And why would you why? think I would say that. Well, I would suggest that. So, those groups of constituents, there are, they are willing to do work. If you have people that have signed up for your race year over year, they've dedicated their Saturday, they've paid the registration fee, these are some of your best channels to start with in order to um, kind of build up the site, get word out about giving Tuesday campaign. Now to use, if you are in the middle of peer-to-peer -peer event, um, is to use Giving Tuesday as a push for that event. So let's say your event is September 15th, um, before your event, right? And if it, this is a peer-to-peer -peer event, you have people fundraising, hopefully, and signed up to fundraise and to register for your event, um, we know that there is a much higher success Right. They just make the ask to their friends and family on your behalf. You are in the middle of some type of peer to peer fundraiser right now that will run past December 1st. You giving Tuesday an extra push for current fundraisers. This is also a great tactic to bring those new fundraisers into the mix. Your fundraiser. Oops, for my, uh, go for there. There we go. Um, you can do things like offer incentives or contacts for anybody that completes certain actions. Like, for example, on Tuesday, any that logs into their participant center and sends the most emails on the first Giving Tuesday, or it acquires the most donors on Giving Tuesday, the person that received the largest donation. Giving Tuesday will rise. And you know that you can put that, you know, make it as a separate email communication where you're announcing that. Um, there's just there's so many different creative things, and I could honestly talk about this one slide for 30 minutes, but I won't. I've got a lot more to get through. Uh, but just consider doing something like that. Again, kind of weaving your strategies into the things that you already have going on. I'll make sure you arm and prepare your fundraisers ahead of time. We'll talk more about where you can get these resources from in a few minutes. But I'm going to be thinking right now about toolkits, messages, anything that your fundraisers can use, um, unselfie templates, graphics for your website, social media stuff, anything they're going to need to be successful. But most importantly, you're giving them the tools to spread your hand, right, to spread around who you are. Now, if you aren't hosting any type of peer-to-peer -peer event, like, like a walkathon, but let's say you still want to jump on the bandwagon, there's certainly avenues for you to follow as well. Now, I talked a little bit about this earlier. I'm sure you all have some type of end-of-year giving. You probably already have a communication plan leading up to that. Tuesday in your next email or newsletter, stating the date of Giving Tuesday, the 
And if you have anything special, like a matching donor, you want to create that sense of urgency, and then make this stand out. I suggest you, you put a highlighted area or in the PS part of an email, right? Don't just bear it in your newsletter in, you know, sentence four in the middle of paragraph three. Um, a special little piece and something that, that people will immediately see when they are reading that communication. Now, that using peer-to-peer -peer analogy for Giving Tuesday is your absolute best plan that you can follow. So if you have a platform like Sphere or Team Razor that allows people to sign up and create their own fundraising page, I suggest you use that. Those of you, we don't want to discriminate, <laughs> that don't do walk with bonds and you don't have any type of peer, -peer fundraising um, platforms to use, you can all use a simple donation form. Just suggest and a couple of things here, as I mentioned, make sure it's mobile, ready, right, and responsive. I would also suggest make sure your donation form is branded for Giving Tuesday Initiative. And if you just do a donation form, you're really taken away from the true peer concept, but it is certainly better than nothing. So I've um, already about a communication plan, and, and here's a good one to follow. Now keep in mind, um, you teasing, quote, quote, teasing, about giving Tuesday starting now. But see in November, go have five to short emails ready out to your giving Tuesday campaign. The first email segmented here participants, and all others. And the reason I did that is because if you just wrapped up any event, your annual walk, you know, 2015 bola -thon or whatever your annual signature fun event is, if you just wrapped up that event, and let's say I was there, I participated in our fundraise for you, you are hitting me up with yet another fundraiser, I might elect it. I might ignore your ask. So what we have found, and I talk a lot about this in the Team Razor program, is that by talking to past peer to event participants differently, you can reach more success. So first email, three to four weeks prior to giving Tuesday, which is your A on your screen. Thank them. Use their past participation and make them feel like they're hearing about this new Giving Tuesday campaign first. People like to feel like, like they're in something. They have a secret. You know, they heard something first. Uh, tell them how valuable they are to your organization. And you know, you know that these participants, these walk on type of participants, they are in the network of people to ask. Right? They're used to <laughs> fundraising. They know what it is. They know how to ask. These are your rock stars right here. Also, make mention of any matching sponsors. We talked about that earlier. So important. Or any incentives that I talked about incentives earlier. So maybe we're going to target your past team captains and past participants from a walk this year. And maybe that group of people, you're going to say, hey, if you log in to just been center and you send 10 emails on Giving Tuesday, we're going to enter you into a raffle. And to do to get them to, to move. So similar email to anybody else in your house file, and that's your email 1B. Then in weeks prior to Giving Tuesday, send out another short email asking people to sign up or donate. But we email more about how the funds raised will affect your mission, right? Feeling impact, visibility into um, that concrete, tangible evidence of how funds raised is going to make a difference. Before Giving Tuesday, make your final push. 
And in Giving Tuesday, you need one email as a reminder that it's a big day, but I definitely recommend you be doing on that day. You know, shopping, <laughs> you don't need to be online shopping. You, hopefully the shopping was over with. Um, you need to have yourself or, or on your staff get into social media 24 hours, and of course you'll probably have to, to kind of slice those shifts up, right? Um, what you want to be doing is sending updates periodically through day the um, for media, via email, work really well in the past. Um, so let's say at noon on your day, let's say your goal is 50000 and you've only raised 10000 You still got that update needs to go out at noon on, on Giving Tuesday. Um, people are more apt to give when they see that others have already done so. So you've, you've gained some traction in your thermometer, right? You filled it up some, a fifth away, right? But you go. And so you want to continue to make that appeal throughout the day to remind people um, about how close you are to your goal, remind them that, you know, we've already raised $10,000. That's going to be 100,000 families, but we still have 40000 more dollars to go. You also want to be doing this on social media. Telling, um, I can't remember if I had a slide about this, but telling um, donors if they're okay with that, posting pictures to Facebook, sharing the unselfies, right, encouraging your, your donors to do the unselfies thing. So there's a lot going on on the day of Giving Tuesday. And I'll show you where you can get all kinds of resources and toolkits that have all of these suggestions. So our next step. So number one, start planning now. It's really not too early, you guys. Try to find a matching donor for donations given on December 1st. It's just to ask a large donor or business who's already planning on to you to mail. If you make you're promoting it. And it's probably already thinking um, about your year appeals. Give Tuesdays the perfect day to launch. So be prepared ahead of time. Fill out what you've planned for your year in giving. And some pain uh, at the latest, I would say, is December 1st. I prefer to do a few days before. Simple, but make donating easy. And your donation forms are optimized, right? They're mobile ready, responsive. If you're not sure, if you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> take your phone, take your mobile phone, and try to look at your donation form on it. If it's easy to read, the button large, it doesn't fit nicely on your screen, it's probably not optimized for mobile. You need preparing a form to be responsive. Now, and if you're a peer platform, team raiser, or sphere, or just a simple donation form, to come to brand your form. I mentioned this earlier. Um, don't simply link from Facebook to donations and donation form. People actually donate 38 percent more. If form is branded for that specific initiative. Plus, you do this, it gives you the opportunity to make mention on the form of any matching donors that you've acquired, you know, or, or anything else that you kind of want to advertise. And once you set up, if you have capabilities, send a text message with a call to action for your Giving Tuesday campaign. And, and the reason I threw this in here, and some of you won't do that at all, but text messages have a 99% open rate, which is the highest of any communication. And if you pair that with us peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, so let's say maybe you only target that group of people with a text message early on December on December 1st, so you can gain some traction and progress. People are more apt to give, as I said earlier, when they see that others have already done so. Of course, for every nonprofit raising money, I'll have a plan for recognition. But because this is technically a 24 hour campaign, you need to have somebody dedicated to this on December 1st. 
Rocky Senior Donors on social media outlets, tagging them on Facebook, thinking about them. Incorporate a special hashtag. Think about that. Um, and I'll mention that a little bit more later, but um, start thinking on what will be a cool hashtag for our own Giving Tuesday campaign. Whatever you can do to spread the word on a day and recognize your donors via social media, um, it really, really helps boost the, um, those kind of final numbers. So if you're really dedicated to your campaign during those 24 hours, um, we've seen great success by not only recognizing the donors, but posting pictures and tagging them on social media and showing the impact of the dollars raised. So for example, post on Facebook at 12 o'clock noon on December 1st something like, we already raised $5, and we're going to be able to feed 12 families. Please need to donate so we can reach our goal of, re of feeding three families. And that's a perfect way to put it. So right on social media, there's two big trends for you to be aware of, hashtags and unselfie movement. So the unselfie um, movement was just very popular last year. And it actually kind of works the way the I Bucket Challenge did in the fact that nope's to be left out. And that was the magic behind the ice bucket challenge. So encourage donors to get a picture of them themselves, explaining why they donated to you, and then to Facebook or tweet about it. And then if you can, if you've thought of a, a creative king hashtag ahead of time, you can incorporate your campaign hashtag into an unselfie template that they can use and print out and then post it to their social media site. And then here are some um, examples of hashtags. I have to like your bite these this day. Mom knows what hashtags are. Um, but just speaking of the Giving Tuesday hashtag, last year I had 32.7 million Twitter impressions. Um, of course, we already mentioned we, that raised over $45 million last year, um, 700,000 mentions. So these are popular um, hashtags, hashtag on selfie, hashtag Giving Tuesday. And then, of course, we want to see a hashtag your own meaning, you're going to create your own hashtag for your own campaign. So just remember, when you're posting on Facebook or especially with Twitter, to be using the hashtag giving to you see, works for the unselfies, use the hashtag unself. And those are kind of the two main industry ones. Okay, um, giving2c.org has already done a lot of the work for you. The news there. And I've been following Giving Tuesday since 2012, and I'll tell you, every year they, they've revamped their stuff. Um, they just, they, they, they're so devoted to helping you be successful on Giving Tuesday. Um, I'd say 90% of, of what you probably are thinking and you need to create is already on there. For example, they have an entire social media toolkit for organizations to use. It is fantastic. It's easy to follow. It's easy to understand. GivingTV.org. You need to get have an entire unselfie toolkit that you can share with, with your supporters. They do simple Facebook posts. I mean, they really do a lot of the work for you. And if you just, just take a little time to explore their website, GivingTuesday.org, especially the toolkits, there's some really, really cool stuff on there. And um, Resources, and I was going to share my screen. I just thought it would be easier to pull it into this slide. These are all the different resources that they have available. So again, go to the site and you'll be able to uh, to navigate to any of those areas. It's a good one. So for Q&A, I wanted to uh, just leave you with some concrete takeaways. So let's discuss all the things that you should be thinking about now. In 2 org website has some really good resources 
for you to use. So make sure to visit that page. And also join. It's free when you get to givingccc.org. Go ahead and register your nonprofit. So load all of our resources in cloud. And it's not too early to start promoting. make um, today's presentation available to everyone. So just review some of the things that we talked about today. Number two, visit the givingtc.org website and join. So I just mentioned that. Download the toolkits and explore site. They just have such good stuff on there. And tell you, sometimes I'll just go on there just because I love all the things just to see what's new. Um, I, I just can't say enough good things about it. Um, number four, so of course, start promoting. And it's not too early to promote, as I said um, earlier. If you are weaving this into an end of year campaign, you start teasing this in your newsletter. So we've really talked about that a lot. Um, also, um, ask your participants to gain action. And we've talked a little bit about, of course, why those people are certainly um, yours. And you know they are willing to do the work for you. Selfie movement, I've tried to stress all along how this can boost your campaign and expose to who you are to make sure you are supporters to support on social media by posting an unselfie photo. You can do this lots of ways. Um, donation confirmation email with instructions on posting the unselfie to social media. You can template it and just print out that he has your campaign hashtag on it. So then to write why they gave, snap their picture, their selfie, and put or tweet about it. One of the absolute proven best ways to spread about your campaign are those on selfies. And number seven, I suggest you have a few staff members dedicated to social media on this one day. I think last time I'll say it, you want to be tagging people on Facebook, being about donations made, posting about the progress of your campaign, all things throughout the day. Okay. And important, of course, with any campaign to show impact. So if you've raised $500 by noon on December 1st, tweet about that. Post it to Facebook. Send out an email um, that, you've, that you've raised enough money to, to provide 10 free breast exams. What is it you do? People really like to see money is making a difference. All I have for you guys, so Danielle, I don't know if you want to mute the lines. Um, I believe I answered all the questions from the Q&A panel. But you take any, any questions at this time as well. Yeah, um, so seven, they can unmute their lines if they'd like to. Um, I had one question that came up. If they want to create images um, to show on social media, you know, images with quotes on them or images with stats on them, um, are there any free tools that they can use to do that? Yep. Absolutely. Canva.com is one of my favorites. It's free. It's easy to use, and I'll put it in the, uh, in the chat here, Canva. We have some templates that you can use to get started with. There's there a lot of free tools. Allison, I don't know if you have any more. You're, you're more of the web developer on oh, side of things. Um, but uh, .com is one of my favorites. Sure. Um, Sherry just said her challenge is familiarizing herself with the donation page and then deciding what type of event um, to either Team Razor. Oh, I guess she uses both Team Razor and Net Community. Um, but share a question that you just to <laughs> or just commenting. Um, but that was the only other question I had, Tammy, was is if there was a free tool kind of to, to create really cool graphics. Um, it was for everyone here, it's Canva, C-A-N-V-A, almost like canvas.com. Um, um, I had. Uh, Sherry was wondering, is there a summary? I was wondering of creating a donation page. Do you know, Sherry, on how to create a donation form in Luminate Online? Oh, the Convio trainings were moved into Blackboard Training Central, Blackboard University, I think it's called. So if you just go in there and you search for Luminate, 
all available trainings will pop up. Um, and upon your subscription, I would assume that you would have access to almost all of Illuminate trainings. There's going to be on-demand trainings that you just click through, as well as live instructor-led trainings that you can take. The other thing I would encourage you to take a look at is when you have a follow-up email for today, there's going to be a link to the other webinars that are part of this series. Go take a look at those webinars because there's everything from sustained giving to team raiser to creating responsive emails and Luminate. So in addition to what's available in Training Central, a lot of webinars that are part of the series, all of them are available from the last almost three years available on that webinar page, and you can access any of them and, and, and topics that you want to listen to. So, um, I guess Sherry is asking, Team Razor should be used for peer-to-peer -peer access, whereas Net Community Events doesn't quite have that. Right, that's correct. So, uh, okay. A fair unit, um, and you are part of Marco's Team Razor program. So you could use a Team Razor. You could set up a simple Team Razor just for your Giving Tuesday initiative. And as I mentioned earlier, that really does um, kind of provide that, that true peer-to-peer -peer experience, right? Just like, like with your wallet and everything else. So I can sign up. I can from the Give Tuesday initiative. I can then use Team Razor, my own little participant center, to tell my story on why I'm raising money on Giving. Tuesday, I can send emails to my friends and family. It is the true peer to peer experience that all of your walk participants have. Now, not to manage, though, right? And I'm not being unrealistic. I, I totally understand holding a whole team razor from scratch, um, you know, easy feat, right? So, if you have the staff to do that, that's what I prefer to see because, again, um, statistics, if I'm raising money for you and I'm asking my friends and family, they're more likely to donate than if you as my friends and family. But on the flip side, I know it is quite a process, you could certainly, and this is, to be realistic, this is probably the way more, more, more of you are going to go, current donations form in, in that community um, or in Lumineer Online or where, Sphere, wherever you have donation forms. Just make sure you brand it for the Giving Tuesday initiative um, and because we talked about the stats earlier. And that's a, you know, a much easier kind of setup. It's one donation form. You can brand it very easily. You can then send the link to that donation form through whatever communication channels you plan on utilizing. Um, and then you can go from there. You still, you know, you still can leverage all the tools, the resources on the GivingTuesday.org website. You can link, uh, email people the healthy uh, template after you've ran it for yourself. So uh, I know it sounds like a whole lot, um, but I think once you, you kind of get your game plan together, whether you're going to do peer-to-peer -peer or just a simple edition form, and then you figure out how are you then going to weave all that other collateral, like toolkits and cell templates, how are we going to put this in our communications plan? I think once you can kind of get all kind of your mind wrapped around all of those things, I think you'll the ball hopefully start to, to turn forward a little bit. So hopefully that helps, Sherry. Thanks, so much, Tammy. I want to make sure we have enough time to cover the last couple of slides here. So thank you, Tammy and Allison, for presenting today. This is a really useful topic. And like I said to everyone, we'll have this recording as well as um, the um, um, recording and the slides up in the up in the community in a couple of days. How Blackboard help? If you're sitting here wondering, hey, is there anything else Blackboard can help with? What other services are there? I do want to make everyone aware of this because we typically run into situations where people are like, I wish I had known that you could do that. So at the point, like Tammy said, if your website's not responsive and you're sitting there going, yes, this has to happen. Um, actually have specialists that do website design just for nonprofit organizations. So I um, might have known that. It's kind of a small team here at Blackboard, but they're great, and they only work with nonprofits. So they specialize in what's the story you need to tell and who's your audience, because it's different, right? Um, we also have, if you've got a large monthly giving program and you have a lot of donations being processed through Lumen Online, 
BBMS, if they are your internet merchant provider, they have a credit card updater service that will automatically update those credit cards so you don't lose out on that revenue, which is actually the number one place people do lose out. If by chance you um, started and have Relo integration, the integration between Razor's Edge and Luminate, but you did that prior to February of this year, January of this year, you had that done last, uh, last year, there's actually a new onboarding program. Even though you might be using Relo now for a good month of this year, if you've never attended the Relo integration webinar series, um, please let your CS know and they can get you the dates for those webinars. It's just for folks that have already implemented the Razor's Edge Illuminate integration. It's a three-part webinar series. They are live. It's with my colleague Valentina and it's how to manage the integration between the two systems, how to troubleshoot it, and where to go to help. So again, if you have questions about any of that, they eliminate CSN. They can help you with that. Um, an opportunity that actually Tammy has just launched, Tammy and Allison, is do it yourself. Third-party fundraising in your organization, where you ask people to maybe hold a mixer, donate their birthday, pledge their birthday to your organization, or you want to do that, and you move beyond having someone just fill out a PDF form. Um, we now have a really amazing six-week program, U Team Razor, where we set up a site for you so that people that are inspired to fundraise on their terms can do it for you. But they do efficiency in the technology through Lumen Online, and you're able to promote that and manage that and leverage the richness that comes from that new circle of donors and supporters. And uses Team Razor, and that's the do-it-yourself fundraising program. So, again, another one, ask your CSM if you're interested in that. Thank you again for taking the time. It's always important, especially as end of the year starts to approach, every hour you have is quite precious. We know that here. Um, I've worked with organizations for a long time, and myself, I worked at organizations for 13 years. I was a client, so thank you. Join us next month. Save the date, October 3rd, moving your year of campaign forward. Three amazing speakers, Scott Gilman, Mike Snooze, and Ben Wong. Ben is the Creative Services Director for our website design here at Blackboard. Scott is one of our Scott and Mike are two of our best fundraising experts on the Success Services team. And they're going to talk to you about how to move your end of the year campaign forward, looking at social, email, donation forms, and website, the whole campaign. And so save the date. That's going to be October third. Um, that registration link will be up in the community eventually. But go ahead and just mark that on your calendar um, and keep that kind of in the back of your mind. So thank you, everyone. Again, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming out. Um, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And the session is at um, uh, 1 o'clock on October 3rd, 1 o'clock Eastern. So thank you, everyone. Take care. And thank you again, Tammy and Allison, for your help today and the great content. Thanks for having us.